Welcome into Sports Memo. I guess Monday morning edition, the day after the Super Bowl with Teddy Covers. Teddy, welcome in the pod. How are you doing? I'm doing all right today, Drew. How about yourself, man? You uh, How's the hangover treating you? You're, that was your first Super Bowl in Vegas, right? First Super Bowl in Vegas, uh, bounced around a couple different sports books, live, live atmosphere, Teddy. It was a lot of fun, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, honestly, I think I would rather be in Vegas for a Super Bowl than at the game itself. You know, I mean, the, the, the game itself, sure, you get to get in the venue and people are nuts, but you don't get replays the same way, you know, you don't get the, your, your, your box score in front of you. Vegas Super Bowl week is something special. Super Bowl weekend. I mean, you you experienced it yesterday, Drew. It really is a lot of fun, and it's an atmosphere that's second to none. So, uh, if you're out there in in viewer land and thinking about it, put put that on your bucket list. Uh, you want to be in Vegas for a final for a. Uh, I, I think the the opening weekend is better than the final four, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, the opening weekend of the NCAA tournament and Super Bowl weekend are are two must do events in Vegas once before you die. Yeah, I mean, the, the Super Bowl, We uh, this town is electric. I've never felt like a city, you know, as electric as Vegas is in the, what, five months that I've lived here. But yesterday, for sure, was like next level, man. There was <laughs> there was a lot going on. The sports book was electric, Teddy. It, it was it was pretty wild to be a part of. And I agree with you. I've been to a Super Bowl before working at it. Actually, the last time it was at in Miami. And it, it was enjoyable to an extent, but not like Vegas, man. Vegas is a party. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. People are really getting after it. Whereas at the game, you know, it's more of like a, a, a little bit more corporate feel. Vegas isn't a corporate feel at all. No, <laughs> you know, Vegas, Vegas is a fun feel. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad you had a good, you know, I mean, I, I've kept it real mellow yesterday. I didn't, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've been out and about Super Bowl Sunday. And now that I'm an old guy, I'm like, all right, we'll have a couple of friends over at the house and uh, watch the props real co- closely and be able to time the national anthem and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, certainly, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's a buck. It's an absolute bucket list event. And it's not just a sports book. I mean, the whole town is just jamming. You know, the clubs are jamming and the, the casinos are jamming. And there's an, there's an energy here that you legitimately feel, you know, it pulses through you in a way that, uh, that I can't even imagine on uh, the big game itself uh, in venue that it, that it's quite the same. Yeah, absolutely. I'm right there with you, Teddy. And uh, guys, we're going to be uh, breaking down. The props, uh, the the finish here at the Super Bowl, get Teddy's opinion. Also touch on a little NBA looking forward because this time slot going forward, we're going to be touching on NBA, also uh, football, both NFL and NCAA football going forward. Plus uh, get a little look towards next year's NFL and uh, what Teddy's thinking in terms of who's going to win the Super Bowl, any value on any teams and uh, start to look ahead towards Season wins in the NFL, but Teddy, looking back at yesterday's game, um, overall, I, I lost on the 49ers plus one and a half props. You know, slight loss, I believe. Uh, hit, hit some good ones that I'm proud of, and then also, you know, gave some back and others. Overall, you know, an entertaining day, slightly down. But uh, what about you, man? How'd you do, and, and, and what'd you think about overall the betting landscape of the Super Bowl? So uh, the class and I cashed with the Chiefs. You know, it certainly wasn't a right side. It wasn't a wrong side. It felt like a coin flip game all week <laughs> and it ended yeah. up being, you know, uh, and, and uh, it, my end result was that I, I thought Mahomes, I'm like, I don't want to bet against the Michael Jordan uh, of the NFL. And that really what it came down to was Mahomes made. And if, if you watch the game in the fourth quarter game on the line, Mahomes made the plays and Jimmy G didn't, you know, I mean, yeah. and everyone's point Shanahan did this and Shanahan did that. He's an easy scapegoat. I didn't think, I, I mean, and of course, you watch the play calling real closely because this happened the last time Shanahan was in the Super Bowl. I didn't argue with one play call for San Francisco down the street. Not one. You know, it wasn't like, okay, well, this one time, you, oh, we should have thrown there instead of running or we should have run there instead of, th-. you know, you can make those arguments. There wasn't any egregious mistakes, like the egregious mistake when they got in field goal range, when the Falcons were in field goal range against the Patriots and they dropped back to pass the next play and got sacked uh, and I got knocked out of field goal range, which happened twice on two consecutive drives. Uh, in the uh, in the loss to the Patriots, so I'm not looking at Shanahan choke this one away. I'm looking at the best player in the NFL made the plays down the stretch, and the lesser of the two quarterbacks couldn't match him. And look, I, I mean, Garoppolo had Sanders open for what might have been the game winning touchdown after the you know the score was 24 right. 20. And it's a, I mean, there was two third down, but it was third and 15, and Tyreek Hill catches the 44 yarder, stays under longest. Play a longest pass play of the game, 44 and a half yards. That's brutal. And Hill got 44. Um, 
you know, uh, I forget if that was the longest pass for the game or the longest pass from Mahomes, but I know that uh, Garoppolo's was shorter anyway. Uh, but, yeah, finished with 44. But that was the third and 15. That, you know, if it's fourth down there, Casey might have to go for it, you know? Uh, yeah, not, not not too much time left. No, no, no. They were under seven minutes, and they were down two scores um, with the third and 15 to, to, to Tyreek Hill. Uh, and then the, it was the third and long that Garoppolo missed Sanders um, that, that made him have to punt back. Uh, so, I mean, those were the, if you're talking about the two key plays of the game, it was those two plays, those two third downs. You know, the Chiefs connected on theirs, so and Mahomes hit his receiver, and Garoppolo didn't hit his receiver. And that was the, the, the biggest inflection points uh, in the game. Uh, but, I mean, at no, I mean, I KC, and at no point did I feel good about that, kind of, you know, the Chiefs until Damian Williams scored that last touchdown, which, of course, killed all the Niners teasers uh, and killed any of the big, you know, the, the Niners teasers died on that. You know, that was a, that was a pretty big touchdown. Uh, and, of course, it killed a lot of stuff when it came to the, you know, if, if you, uh, if you tease the over, it made the over good um, in that contest. It killed all the alternate totals. It gave you a plus 300 on KC minus 10 and a half, you know. Mm-hmm. The <laughs> Which total like, became, it came in play, too. Yo, oh, yeah. scored that touchdown, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, there was uh, there was so much with the, 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 that we can go through. You know, from from my prop standpoint, it was a little bit frustrating. I got to say, I mean, we didn't have a bad day on the props, but I could have had a monster day on the props because my concepts were right. <laughs> Let's start with Damian Williams. You know, Damian Williams got targeted four times in the first quarter, didn't catch any of them, and then he finished a half completion short and a half yard short of his uh, <laughs> of his uh, passing attempts. You know, he got four completions at him over four and a half. If you bet it early, he got three and a half on that. Over 29 and a half receiving yards, he got to 29. That, to me, was really frustrating, the, you know, losing those two Williams props for the clients. If you bet him early, you could have cashed both of those, and that frustrated me as well. Uh, you know, but I, I, I expected the Chiefs to force to be forced to dump off the ball, and then that handicap was correct. Williams just didn't catch all the passes and didn't get, right. you know, finished a half guy, completion a half yard short. Uh, I had Garoppolo over uh, attempts. And passing yards. And, of course, the last touchdown, Garoppolo was sitting at 29 pass attempts. KC's got the ball. They get a first down. They take a knee. And Garoppolo stays at 29. But Williams busts the touchdown. And now Garoppolo goes over because of that because the, the, uh, the 49ers get the ball back. I so didn't realize that. Going uh-huh. over the, the pass. That was a, I was so – because, if you remember, there was a pass attempt. On the four, – was it the fourth down that he passed? There was a pass – that was ended up being he got called in the grasp. Yeah, it was on the fourth down play that right. he got, yeah. that he, and he was ruled in the grasp before he threw the ball. Because if he throws the ball there, he's at thirty. You don't have to sweat what happens in the last drive for Casey. He gets over twenty nine and a half, but he didn't. Uh, <laughs> it was ruled uh, that he was in the grasp, which meant he was at twenty nine attempts, which means that you needed the Chiefs touchdown to get San Fran back on the field, which we got. So we got Garoppolo over uh, uh, attempts, and I knew he was going to have to throw the ball. He didn't get the over passing yards which was frustrating because, uh, I mean, the, the handicap of the game that San Fran's got to chuck the football, they're going to be aggressive, was spot on. But we split with the Garoppolo. I thought they were going to target Debo Samuels a bunch, and they did, you know. But he kept on catching these short pay. He went over receptions, but he went under yardage. I have him over yardage. Uh, and he went over rushing yards in the very, on, like, the third play of the game. And I, that was, I threw that out. I, I, I was so mad at myself. I wrote up all the unders. I'm like, no score first five minutes, no score first five and a half, no score first six, no six and a half, seven. I had it all written up. And I deleted it right before I put it out. I'm like, you know, I think San Fran's going to come out aggressive, and I'm not going to put that out. And, of course, uh, no score first five, five and a half, six, six and a half, and seven all came through because of the penalty on the last, uh, which gave uh, San Fran an extra play before they kicked the field goal to go up 3 nothing, which was just after the seven-minute mark. Uh, it was a two or three seconds you got because of a penalty that made that, that the seven-minute come through. And that was a plus price on that. Uh, so I'm real, uh, I'm, I'm disappointed that, uh, I didn't give that to the clients cause that was one that I really liked and wrote up and then I cut it out at the last minute. Uh, but I thought Debo would be targeted. He was targeted. He just didn't get over the total punts under. I talked about that a lot. Oh uh, yeah. Nice call. Was, you know, they, they punted the first time in the game and I think they both finished with uh, two punts each. So I thought punts. it was going down after, you know, the chiefs punted real early. I'm like, oh, yeah. Huh? Oh yeah. As soon as the chiefs punted, I'm like, okay, there's one, you know? Uh-huh. You're, right, right away too. There was a, what, a minute yeah. off the clock, and then and then there wasn't another punt. Was it the fourth quarter for the next punt? I mean, it was a long time before there was a punt. You know, and the game played out like I thought it was going to, which was the long, time-consuming drives, 
and the teams that the defenses that weren't getting stops. I mean, from a handicapping standpoint, I really thought I got a lot right in this game, and my props probably should have been result better as a result. But anyhow, we cashed the under seven and a half total punts with ease. That we cashed the under two and a half players with a pass attempt, and that was a sweat and a half. You remember that when when they. On, on the very first Niners drive, they handed it to Debo, and he was about to throw. But he didn't Superman. throw it, right? And that was the only other. That was the only time all game that it looked like someone else was going to throw. But that was a. My heart was like, oh, because I laid minus one fifty with that. I told the clients to do that. I'm like, oh, as soon as Debo was, I'm like, go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, why'd you Why'd up. you bet that one with with two weeks to prepare? I I don't know. I felt like both teams would draw something up. That's why I stayed away from that. Okay. I was very confident that the only person Andy Reid was going to have throw a pass in this game was Patrick Mahomes. And you look at KC's season and, you know, they had a, they had a fake punt, you know, they had, had, I think there was one receiver pass all, I mean, in the Super Bowl, Reid was going to go with this guy. So I was very confident that Kansas city was only going to have one player throw. So the question is, is San Fran going to use the trickery? You know, is that going to happen? And when you went through this, the, the Niners, 18 games this year, they had two pass attempts from someone that wasn't Garoppolo. You know, it's not like something that they did on the regular. Um, you know, Sanders and Pettis had both thrown one on a trick play. Um, and I was, and so I, I, mean, I, I thought the biggest fear would be a quarterback injury. You know, I really didn't see either team taking that type of a chance in a game where they didn't need to. So I thought the 150 was reasonable. Uh, and it was, even though it was a, an early sweat. After the early sweat, it was no sweat at all. Um, Zion Williamson points uh, against the Rockets versus um, Raheem Mostert carries. You take Zion. You know, that's one that I don't know if everyone was able to find. That was on the prop report. Uh, that one worked out just fine. They played up-tempo against the Rockets. They covered for 47 minutes of that game and didn't cover the 48th, unfortunately. We had a little play on the Pelicans yesterday, uh, plus the points. Uh, but Zion got his job done. He got 21, and, and we knew that Mostert wasn't going to get the carries like he did in the uh, – and we knew that line was inflated, and so so we cashed uh, on that one. So uh, overall, it was a, a, an okay day for the props. We made a little bit of money, but I, I felt like with the read that I had on the game, I, I should have made more with the props. I'm a little bit disappointed with the result. Yeah, it's all right, man. More winners than losers. Uh, take but it every exactly. time. Okay, I mean, I'm not going to complain. We made money yesterday, uh, and I never complain. I, well, I, yeah, you complain off a of money-making day, but – uh, it was what we do. Uh, but it's how I thought the game was going to play out. It played out that way. And when it actually plays out the way you think it's going to play out in terms of the length of the drives and the types of the plays that are being successful, uh, I, I felt like I, I, I should have had a better day of the props that I did. Again, we made a little bit of money, but I should have made a lot of money yesterday. And, and, and uh, I'll take a little bit. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. Uh, but it could have been better. Teddy Covers on Twitter, at Teddy underscore Covers, uh, each and every Monday here on the Sports Memo Betting Podcast. Guys, special coupon for this podcast, we got Teddy999, that's T-E-D-D-Y 999, for $1,000 off of his one-year all-access, a one-day deal here, guys, 24 hours. It is available. You will get all of his plays in every sport for one year till the day after the Super Bowl next year. You're good them all for under a thousand bucks, a thousand dollars off the retail price at sportsmemo.com. Teddy999 at checkout. Teddy, let's talk about next year's NFL. We got hang the, on uh, a second, though. Do you oh, just yeah, give away my, like a year, a full year for like 80 bucks a month? Every player. Yeah, man. Play? It's, uh, it's it, it's not my choice, Teddy. It all is. Right. Uh, hey, all I'm going to say is that if you want to get involved, uh, that's a good deal. All right, you're not going to. I, I don't know. You're going to get a better deal than every play that I have for the next year with write ups and analysis and no more to buy than, uh, you know, uh, nine ninety nine for the for the year. Um, that's cheap. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't even like it. You know, and whatever, win or lose, I work hard. <laughs> you know, uh, I do. Uh, that's cheap, man. That's a good deal. So if, if you take advantage, yeah, that's Absolutely. all I'm going to say. If, if you're interested, take advantage. And the coupon code is Teddy nine 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 at checkout. Fifty seven percent in the NBA since Christmas. So NBA has been hot, and obviously his NFL five years running fifty seven percent in last eight weeks here. It's 69%. You'll get all of his NFL for next season. Don't have to worry about that through the Super Bowl. Teddy999 at checkout. Teddy, I got the MGM numbers right in front of me. and uh, I got the Westgate numbers, so let's go. Let's see what we got. Well, let's get after it. Talking about uh, 
what Kansas City looks like leading the charge here, seven to one. Uh, San Francisco right behind them. Is, is that something normal? You know, the two the two Super Bowl teams right at the top for next year's futures. Also, so, something I got circled here: Las Vegas Raiders. Man, um, that's I'm the first time you been, see it, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, Where's, Oakland? Where's Oakland? Oh, LV. Yeah, that's us. All right, call them us because they're the Vegas team. Absolutely. Um, okay, so let's talk about and. Let me talk about this right off the get-go. There's no way I'm putting any of my money down on any of these NFL futures right now. Because the lines you see here, you're going to be able to get them three months from now. You're going to be able to get them five months from now. Most of these lines. Between now and the start of the regular season, you might see a 50 to 1 become 40 to 1. You know, uh, But between now and August, you know, you'll see a little flurry. Then these numbers will stay pretty stale. And of course, even though this was not a good year for the NFL season wins... You know, I, well, well, when, we, when we talk about season wins come uh, come spring and summer, I'll explain exactly everything that happened and why it was a sh- crappy year and all that. I don't want to go on and on uh, on that right now. But it's nothing that I feel is like was the, there, was, there wasn't a fundamental flaw in my process last year. I just made some wrong choices. Um, the NFL season wins continue to be the better bet and will continue to be a better bet. It allows you to bet on or against teams. And, of course, we talk about the future book. Only one of the 32 teams is going to cash. That said, this, when we look at the very first openers, just gives us an idea of where teams are power rated and where the books have teams power rated going into the offseason. And there were five teams that stood out to me as relative long shots that might be live going into next year. And I want to talk about those. Five and again, yeah, let's the hear last it. thing I'm going to do is the Chiefs at 5-1 to one, or the Ravens at 8-1 to one, or the Niners at 8-1 to one, or the Saints at 10-1. to one. If you're going to put money down that you're not going to cash for a year, you have to be looking at long shots. You have to be looking at live long shots. So of the five teams that stood out to me, and again, this is it doesn't get me earlier in the process in this because there's been no free agency and no draft. <laughs> it's impossible. So, yeah. This is all just gut reaction right from the get-go. I'll start with the shortest shots. There's two of them. Philly and Seattle are both 20 to 1. You know, the Eagles, they need receiver help. They need secondary help. I think they're capable of getting help in those two areas. The rest of that roster is Super Bowl worthy. Seattle, too, has a Super Bowl worthy roster with relatively reasonable holes to fill. 20 to 1, I thought, for both those teams. I'm like, hey, they're live in that range. All right. Okay. Ah. Uh, <laughs> There's three left, right? There are three left. I'm going to go to the, uh, the 80 to 1 on the Jets. Okay. Laugh, laugh now. <laughs> exactly. That's your reaction. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's hope. The I'm Jets not laughing the, at you. I'm laughing with you. I know. The Jets are the long shot of the group. Okay. I've seen enough from Sam Darnold that I believe in the guy. Okay. okay? The Jets' d- defense is not riddled with holes. The Jets are not a team that has 500 holes to fill anymore. Okay. They're a team with, like the Eagles, a couple of position groups. Jets are live to make a big jump next year. And I'll tell you flat out, if I see that, you know, I'm expecting to see the Jets lined at seven or seven and a half wins or something like that. It's not a good division. You know, Patriots aren't going in the right direction. Question marks in New England, you're Uh, right. uh, I I, I like the upside of the Jets a lot. And again, 80 to one, it's not not a great, but I started at the bottom and worked my way up. And I'm like, the Jets could do something next year. 80 to one, you want an 80 to one shot there, you know, they have a quarterback. They have a coach. They have a roster. They're not rebuilding. They're not rebuilding from square one or, or anything even close to that. Uh, I thought Tampa at sixty to one is worthy of a look. You know, it's not like their defense was much better than expected this year. Their offense only lacked a quarterback who didn't turn the ball over five hundred times, and I expect them to have better QB play next year. And Arians is, you know, maybe he's the Andy Reid. <laughs> Uh, so I thought Tampa at 60 to one might be a live team uh, for uh, 2020. Uh, and uh, and last uh, but not least, and I'm keeping the Browns off the list. I had to keep the Browns off the list. The Texans at 40 to one. You know, Houston's not far. They weren't far away from the from the promised land this year. Again, you have a quarterback we trust. You have a passing game we trust. You have an offensive line that is likely to be better. You have a defense that can make plays. You have a playoff team. Uh, in Houston at 40 to one, uh, that number stood out to me is, uh, you know, amongst the teams that are there with them, you know, the chargers, the Colts, the Titans, the bills, the Raiders, 
No, Texas is the best team out of that bunch, and, and it's not even close. Um, so I, I thought Houston at 40 to 1. Again, at first glance. And again, and most importantly, I didn't take a dollar out of my pocket to bet any of these. But at first glance, those absolutely were those were the five that stood out to me. And maybe the Browns at 30 to 1. I don't know. <laughs> you know, that would be the sixth of the group that would, you know, uh, Cleveland, again, the, t- the talent and the personnel is there, but this season was such a disaster. And, and I don't know that I want uh, Baker Mayfield at that price is what I want. Because Mayfield, I mean, you talk about a quarterback that regressed in his second season. He regressed like Rick Myra regressed in his second season. There's a blast from the past for you, Drew. Yeah. Yes. Myra run, run, won Rookie of the Year award and then was the worst quarterback in the league for like the next five years before he was out of football. Uh, uh, and that, not to say that uh, that uh, uh, Baker Mayfield is going to be out of football and be the worst quarterback in the NFL, but he had a promising rookie season and he was not good last year. So we'll see if he gets better. I don't know. But, I, he's one of those guys, Teddy. I don't think his his kind of skill set sets up well for NFL success. I think it's really good for college, but I, I just don't think it translates well to the NFL. I'm not I'm not looking to bet on him either. I'm just saying that the Browns the Browns have a lot of talent for a 30 to one team. You know? Ted, and again, this is all first glance, first gut. You know uh, what, what I do at the end of the at the end of the regular season, I, I what I have I, my final power range, and I don't even adjust them in the playoffs. Okay. And then I'll make one adjustment post draft slash free agency, and that's it between now and preseason. You know, I'll make one big. You know, I'll make one, uh, and I a mean, big adjustment. You know, I might adjust team up a couple of points or down a couple of points, but uh, I'm I'm not moving teams five points off what they did in free agency and uh, and uh, 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 the draft unless it's you know something extraordinary or. You know, it was a really good team that got riddled with injuries the year before, and now they're going to be good. You know, the adjustments tend to be fairly modest in, in that regard. Uh, and, of course, the offseason hype is enormous. Um, you know, where the, 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 everyone, oh, the, that seems going to be way better. This seems going to be way worse. And um, once the schedule comes out, that's when we really start to work on, on season wins in, in a real way uh, because then we have an idea uh, not just of who they're playing but the nuances of the schedule, uh, which matter so much in the NFL. Teddy, let me throw like three or four teams at you, get your quick opinion, just because I had them circled going in. Um, Chicago Bears, uh, really good defense. I felt like, you know, the end of the season kind of went against them just because, uh, you know, it's kind of the way that the season went with their defense not 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 performing as well at the end. But I think that they have the talent there if, you know, who knows? I've heard uh, Tom Brady, Cam Newton, you know, if they land one of these top quarterbacks, what about taking a shot with the Chicago Bears to win? you know, take futures there. Um, I wasn't particularly excited about Chicago uh, okay. in the future market. And I, I mean, Trubisky is, Trubisky is going to be back and he's going to be their starting quarterback. Okay. They're not trading Trubisky. Trubisky gets another year before they bail on him. Okay. Um, and that means Brad, Brady's not going to Chicago, you know? And honestly, I mean, I hate to say this publicly, but I think now's the time to say it, you know? So I was talking with a Raiders uh, a buddy of mine who's a big Raiders fan. And I'm like, you know, hey, the rumor, you know, Brady bought a house in Vegas. Rumor he's going to be, a, you know, how do you, he's like, please, no, God, no. You know, uh, Derek Carr right now is better than, than, than Brady. And I'd rather draft Tua than go with Brady. You know, I'd rather draft anyone than go with Brady. Um, I kind of agree with that assessment. <laughs> you know, if Tom Brady ends up somewhere, he's a 43-year-old tired retread quarterback playing in a new system and a new time for his first career, that team's power ring doesn't go up. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, well let, what, what about the Las Vegas Raiders then? Uh, I'm seeing them at 30 to one at MGM. Do you have any opinion on uh, the Raiders for next year? There's still a lot of holes in Oakland, you know, and there's a lot of holes in Chicago. When you talk about personal, you know, uh, for both these teams, when I'm talking about a, a team that was good, but they maybe needed, like I was talking about the Eagles. I'm like, you know, the Eagles get help at receiver. They get help uh, in the secondary and the rest of the roster is Super Bowl caliber. You know, I don't look at Chicago that way. The that defense took a big step back this year. The, they had offensive line issues. The receiving core wasn't that good. The, you know, the skill and talent didn't step up, and they have quarterback issues. With Oakland, you know, there's a lot of holes, on, you know. Uh, and, and you know, we still don't, at, at this stage, I still don't know if Carr is any good. You know, we're five years into his career or whatever. I still don't know. Is this a quarterback you can work with? I don't know. Okay. Uh, at times, but, the, you know, they don't have any receivers. 
they had issues on the defensive line. They have issues in the secondary. You know, the Raiders, uh, in my mind, are still, like the Bears, probably still a year or two away. You know, they need two good off seasons. One is not going to be enough. What about the Atlanta Falcons? I'm seeing them at 30-1 to 1 at MGM. Yeah, and the, honestly, the Falcons are, of, of this grouping, is not, they're not a team I would talk you out of. You know, um, they're, they're really not. And, and just to, just to look real quick. Um, just because, the, you know, the, the quarterback position. The we've seen, what's that? For what it's worth. Yeah, I got oh, the Westgate good. numbers here. KC 5-1, to one, Baltimore San Fran 8-1, to one, New Orleans 10-1, to one, Dallas 12-1, to one, New England 14-1, to one, Pittsburgh 16-1, to one, Philly, Green Bay, Seattle 20-1, to one, the Rams, Bears, Vikings 25-1, to one, Browns 30-1, to one, Chargers, Colts, Texans, Titans, Bills, and Raiders at 40 to 1, Falcons at 50 to 1, Broncos and Bucks at 60 to 1, Jets, Cards, Giants, and Lions at 80 to 1, Jags, Panthers, Bengals, and Miami at 100 to 1. Anyone wants any of those teams, I'll book it and give it 110 to 1. And the Redskins at 200 to 1. <laughs> yeah. I, I like how they put the Redskins at 200 to 1 and the other group at 100 to 1. Like it really makes a difference. Um, uh-huh. hey, t- Teddy, I also shout out to the Westgate, I guess, it's in taking away something from the MGM, all of those you read were more value at the Westgate than yes. at MGM. That's why I wanted to give Westgate numbers. And again, wait, I mean, I, I don't play favorites with books. Okay. What, what, when it comes down to books, it's who's going to give me a better number. And that's all I'm interested in. And in general, in the future prices, you'll find better numbers at the Westgate and you'll find much less of a house takeout at the Westgate in general. There will be, there may be exceptions, uh, but I, I prefer to give their numbers, a house takeout on a lot of these, you know, again, when there's 32 teams, only one of them's going to win. The house takeout's pretty good to begin with. When they're not offering real value back <laughs> on the team that actually wins, uh, you know, sometimes you're laying two to one. You know, we'll minus 180 on these, um, and I don't like to lay that. Yeah, yeah. Know. Overall, it's not a smart bet. I mean, depending what sports book, what it's up near 40 percent takeout, whereas that's a long way off from the minus 110 number. Yeah, they're uh, trying to beat so. This is an uphill battle, bet in the futures. Uh, season win totals, though, Teddy, when do those usually uh, come out and which, which sports books lead them? So the last couple of years, we've seen numbers in February. Um, okay. I don't know if we'll see numbers in February this year. Offshore usually uh, usually leads. But uh, um, but that's been changing in other, in other markets here. Sure, about- absolutely. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is that it's a, it's, it's a, it's, whereas the U.S. marketplace was really behind the offshore marketplace in terms of uh, offering options because we didn't have to. You know, now the competition is such that you kind of have to. <laughs> uh, and uh, but the the first season win totals, I don't even like to bet them because I don't want to send the markets moving in the wrong. You know, I don't want to give the, the and and it's not a mature market. And you start betting heavy into not mature markets, and you affect the whole marketplace. And that's not what I wanted to. So you know, we'll we'll have the season win report. Uh, next year in July, um, I would expect, you know, uh, if, if the market's mature in June, maybe we'll put out in June this year. I'd love to be able to do that. Uh, and maybe, maybe it'll come, but, uh, you know, my, my win report won't come out till the, till this summer. Um, and now I forget the question I was trying to answer. I got lost. It's a man, the Monday after the Super Bowl, sometimes it's hard to it, like start over Monday. Off, there's but... a lot of people missing work today, Teddy. So, uh, <laughs> I think people can, uh, give us a, a little bit of a pass here on that, but, uh, no, no, great, great breakdown in terms of next year's futures. We got, uh, a look back at the props guys. We're going to be doing this podcast each and every Monday with Teddy covers here on the sports memo betting podcast. We got the coupon code Teddy nine, nine, nine at checkout. That's a thousand dollars off his one year all access this is uh only available for the next 24 hours teddy 999 at checkout you'll get every play and every sport he releases with analysis that includes the super bowl prop report it includes the the season win totals with analysis all of that for just 99 bucks or 999 bucks teddy 999 at checkout for his one year all access at sportsmemo.com he's got his free play up there tonight In the NBA, Orlando Magic, Charlotte Hornets. We got uh, NBA action going as well as as well as uh, college basketball. Teddy, we got XFL coming up as well. I'll throw it over to you, man. Is there anything else you wanted to to throw out there before we shut this down? Well, the important thing that people need to know, of course, you know, the NFL opening line report podcast. We do it all football season. Are we still going to call it the NFL opening line report podcast in the uh, (laughs) I don't know, guys. In the comments on Twitter at Teddy yeah. underscore covers at Drew Martin Betts, let us know what you uh, want the title of this uh, time slot for the podcast to be called. 
Absolutely. But so what we plan on doing moving forward, every Monday, Drew and I will get together like we've done all football season. We'll talk a little bit of NBA. We'll do a little stock watch. We'll break down the games for the day in the NBA. But we're going to continue the focus on football all spring and summer as we do this. As lines come out, as future books come out, as win totals come out, uh, we'll bring them up and we'll talk about them. So we'll talk, you know, we'll focus on NBA on a week in, week out basis, but we will absolutely keep football on center stage uh, with our Monday podcast moving forward. And uh, it's been a fun football season, Drew. I really enjoyed it. I want to thank everybody, dude. This podcast has blown up this far. I mean, I've been doing the opening line report in Vegas in one form or another, I think since 2005 or 2006 was when I started doing it back in the day on ESPN radio here in town. And this year, literally, I've been doing it every year straight through. Got more feedback, more buzz. It blew up this, finally, it blew up this year in a way that I, it is really exciting. Um, uh, and we'd, we'd like to continue that. <laughs> so uh, stick around. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Um, and uh, we'll do it again next week. Absolutely, Teddy. I, I couldn't second that anymore, the the growth of this podcast. Really appreciate it, guys. Right into a, a couple guys yesterday, Teddy, and they were like, hey, Drew, we, we watch your opening line report with Teddy Covers. I'm, I, I love when people can come say hi and, and say that kind of stuff here in Vegas. So if you're ever in town, hit us up on Twitter, guys. Love that kind of uh, interaction. And any feedback whatsoever, what you're looking to hear, we're definitely open to that. So, Teddy, I, I, can, I feel you chomping at the bit. Go ahead, man. No, the last thing, Aaron, I know Aaron asked us a question last week, and I, we, I came just after we went on air, and I didn't answer it. Okay, uh, And it was a good question, I thought. Or maybe it wasn't a good question, but I remember he answered it. And Aaron's been so good at sending questions every week, so I just wanted to, uh, uh, to bring it up if you can find it. Um, I'm not like, going like, to be able to find it for the sake yeah. of good content uh, by the end. Yeah. So, Oh, uh, hang on. I'll, so help me God, I'll find it. When did he send it? What's, oh, yeah, it is a ways back, isn't it? Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm Aaron, sorry we'll, we'll get it next week, man. I'll, I, I'll I look will. We'll answer yeah. your question. Was that, I, I don't even remember what it was now. Uh, but we really appreciate the questions, the comments, the feedback, uh, the likes. Thank you. And we'll answer them again. We'll answer any question you got, uh, with the exception of Aaron's question from last week. That's now going to sit for another week. So cheers. We appreciate it. Uh, good luck tonight. And uh, that's it. Well said, Teddy. Uh, each and every Monday, we'll have Teddy on on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers myself on Twitter at Drew Martin bets guys, the coupon code Teddy nine, nine, nine at checkout sports one year, all access thousand dollars off. Good for the next 24 hours. We will be back with Andrew McGinnis talking Tuesday NHL uh, from a betting perspective. So come back and join us guys. Best of luck with your bets until then.